in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. In the latter part of the 17th century, the German theologian and pastor August Franke founded an orphanage to care for the homeless children of Halle. One day when Franke desperately needed funds to carry on his work, a destitute Christian widow came to his door begging for a gold coin. Because of his own financial situation, he politely but regretfully told her he could not help. Disheartened, the woman began to weep. And moved by her tears, Franca asked her to wait for a moment, and he went off to his room to pray. And after seeking God's guidance, he felt that the Holy Spirit wanted him to change his mind. And so trusting the Lord to meet his own needs, he gave her the money. Two mornings later, he received a letter of thanks from the widow. She explained that because of his generosity, she had asked the Lord to shower the orphanage with gifts. That same day, Franca received 12 gold coins from a wealthy lady and two more from a friend in Sweden. He thought he had been amply rewarded for helping this widow, but he was soon to be informed that the orphanage was to receive 500 gold pieces from the estate of Prince Lodovic von Württemberg. And when he heard this, Franca wept in gratitude, recognizing that sacrificially providing for that needy widow, he had been enriched, not impoverished. The power of prayer and faith. Sometimes, sometimes we must just take that step of faith. Sometimes we just have to step out there. And often through this stepping out and this leaning into prayer and faith, we discover something tangible. Miracles. Miracles large and small. Miracles seen and unseen occur. It's amazing. The tangibility of prayer and faith. Money, wealth, power, it rules this world. We see it everywhere. We experience it. But how we use it and what guides our own hearts and souls is the real question for us in our living and who we are and most especially as people of faith. Certainly, it is easier to experience the tangible allegiances of this world the results are before our eyes, everywhere we look, everywhere we turn. And the kingdom of heaven can often, at times, seem intangible. You know, I can do what is right for this cause, perhaps help these folks here in need and these here, give a little here, give a little there, and God will see what I'm doing, and the Lord will bless this work, this ministry, this can be intangible. And yet, and yet, we all know to some extent that the faithful Christian heart knows the tangibility of this living. Give to Caesar that which is Caesar's and to God that which is God's. Jesus is not simply 
separating God and state into two distinct parts. He is speaking on a much deeper level, on a profound level. Remember that coin belonged to Caesar because it was stamped with Caesar's image. And the Greek word here that is used is icon, likeness. And it was marked with Caesar's inscription. The coin was made by the emperor for the emperor's purposes. Caesar had ownership on that coin and all others like it. It was made in the image of Caesar. Right down to the very material. Gold, silver, bronze. The question that naturally comes to mind, what then belongs to God? Well, what is made in the image of God? What is the icon of God? What is stamped in the likeness of God and created for God's purposes alone? Our purpose, your purpose, my purpose as human beings, and what makes us worth anything is that we are created in the very image of God. Uniquely. At our baptism, we are further marked, we are stamped, we are inscribed with the sign of the cross. We are claimed for all eternity. Our image, our likeness, and what is written upon us is that of God. As I said last Sunday regarding the 23rd Psalm, Thou anointest my head with oil. The Lord anointed us and set His seal of ownership upon us and put His Spirit in our hearts, if you will, as a deposit, as a guarantee of what is to come. To whom then do we belong? To whom are we to render? To whom are we to surrender ourselves? This the question of our ultimate loyalty and our deepest allegiances is what Jesus is really talking about as He deals with these plots and these traps to destroy Him, to prevent Him, And the Lord is saying simply that what belongs to God is nothing other than we ourselves. You and me. There is no higher claim upon us. And there can be no higher claim upon us to be set aside, to be anointed, and to be marked as the Lord's. Our lives are God's. And all that we do is to be marked by that conviction and how we live and how we relate one to another. All competing claims for our lives and for our allegiance are to be evaluated and understood in the light of whose we are and of whose image we bear. Because God's image is found in the other the experience of the other, who we may at first believe is wholly different from us, but you know what? We are gravely wrong about that. I've always believed when we look into the eyes of another, we are to remember and we are to see with every bit of who we are that that very divinity of God, that same DNA of God is in the other as it is in us. And it may be difficult. And there may even be folks that you don't like. Raise your hand if you've ever encountered someone you don't like in your life. We should all be raising our hands. But we are called to see 
the image of God in the other. And sometimes it takes a little work to see it and experience it. You see, this is honoring and this is giving back to God what already belongs to God. And by doing so, we are living, living vessels, earthen vessels of our Creator. For the Lord has shown us incredible generosity through grace, through blessing. And we are called to go from this place, to go out those doors into this world, always giving God the things that are God's, gracing and blessing others. You see, the state lays out the law. But as we see in Scripture, Jesus always lays down eternal principles instead of laws. Laws come and go. These eternal principles remain forever. We are gods and everything that has been given to us and everything we are is God's. The state itself is comprised of all that is God's. Our citizenship is in God's kingdom. And yet the paradox is that at the same time, we have a passport and we have a duty to the state. And yes, it's good to show our dedication to the state. Make sure you pay your taxes. And in ways that you feel so called. But it can and should be done with and through the presence of God. There was once a little boy. He wanted $100 so very badly. It reminds me when I was a little boy, I will never forget my grandfather Paul pulling out a $100 bill right in front of me. And my eyes got so big. And he said, if you want this, you can have it, but you need to go do your chores and work in the yard for the day. And I did. This little boy wanted it so bad, this hundred dollars, that he prayed for two weeks. But nothing happened. And then he decided to write God a letter requesting a hundred dollars. And when the postal authorities received the letter addressed to God, USA, <laughs> they decided to send it to the White House. They sent it on to the President of the United States. And the president was so impressed and touched and he was amused that he instructed his personal secretary to send this little boy $50. And when he received it, he was delighted. $50 is a lot of money to a little boy. And so he sat down and he immediately wrote a thank you note to God that read, Dear God, Thank you very much for sending me the money. However, I noticed that for some reason you had to send it through Washington, D.C. And as usual, those devils took half of it. <laughs> Pay your taxes. To whom do we belong? Laws or principles? Mammon or God? And what is tangibly God's? All saints. Right here on the circle. It's buildings. It's property. The power, the lights. The heat, the AC. The bread and wine. The linens. It's ministries, it's staff, it's leadership. You, me, the people. Even BJ, the vicar. <laughs> and Salim, our seminarian. And David, our other seminarian. We are all tangible aspects of God's work. Bringing hope and grace to one another. Right here and beyond. And it takes every one of us offering some form of pledge because we are a family. 
And just like a family, in order to function, we must budget for the year ahead. Remember, we are all on the same ship. This ship is filled with that incredible love and hope that I'm coming to experience myself only being here for a month. And we're all headed in the same direction. Let us all do our part to keep this ship afloat. Moving toward eternity. Remaining that beacon of light and hope that I've heard about, that I'm experiencing right here in Chevy Chase and in Washington, D.C. and beyond. We are living in the paradox of two kingdoms. And God is always at work within and about us. And giving genuinely for God can enrich us in ways we can't even begin to understand or conceive. But believe me, you will see it. Give to the emperor that which is the emperor's, and to God that which is God's. Sometimes it really does take every bit of ourselves leaning forward in that trusting step of faith. But first, we've got to take that step. We've got to step out there. And then we will see and we will know these incredible miracles that are before us. Things great and small and seen and unseen. Miracles of the Lord working in and through you and me. Amen.